Hello and welcome to this video highlighting the next generation of cloud consumption interface powered by ARIA Automation and VMware Cloud Foundation, VCF. I am Mahar Al Asfar, a senior technical marketing architect within the VCF division at VMware by Broca. Platform consumers such as administrators, developers, data scientists, DevOps, and platform engineers are increasingly adopting modern development practices, containerization, and Kubernetes to improve deployment consistency, speed, and agility. The Cloud Consumption Interface, CCI, powered by ARIA Automation within the VCF stack, is now available on-premise for our customers to address consumer needs in a multi-cloud world by providing a simple and secure self-service consumption of all the Kubernetes-based desired state IS APIs available within the vSphere platform via a unified single consumption interface with services aggregated from multiple supervisor clusters for both on-demand infrastructure and containers across VMware Cloud infrastructure. It is available through a Cloud Intuitive User Interface, a Kubernetes command line kubectl plugin, and APIs, providing choices to enable enterprises to develop modern applications with increased agility, flexibility, and modern techniques on vSphere while maintaining infrastructure control. Project users can use Service Broker to access and request catalog items based on their project membership to provision their modern application deployed using the vSphere Supervisor VM and TKG service within a supervisor namespace, leveraging the cloud consumption interface and infrastructure as code template powered by ARIA Automation and VMware Cloud Foundation. To demonstrate the cloud consumption interface, we will request the deployment of a modern online store application called OpenCart. In the application request, we will provide a deployment name and a supervisor namespace name, which provides a Kubernetes-based workspace with a set of resource limits and available vSphere services where we can provision our VM and TKG resources based on our application needs. This is governed by a project-defined supervisor namespace class and a project region accessibility set up by the cloud administrator. In this application architecture, the backend database tier consists of a MySQL database, virtual machine, and a load balancer service exposing MySQL on TCP port 3306 and SSH on TCP port 22, leveraging the supervisor VM service. The front-end web tier, on the other hand, consists of a Kubernetes front-end deployment provisioned with a custom set of parameters that will allow the resulting pod to connect to the database load balancer via its IP address. In addition to deploying a web load balancer service, exposing HTTP on TCP port 80, all created within a dedicated namespace on the TKG cluster resource. Finally, users can use the web service load balancer IP address to load and access the OpenCard e-commerce website. The control plane section of the request, we will provide a name for the TKG cluster and select control plane node count and the VM class we need for the control plane nodes. Next, we can also set the number of worker node count and their VM class to configure the worker node pool on the TKG cluster. We will use the default sizing for now. We will also provide a name and select a VM class for MySQL backend database VM and submit our request when ready. While waiting for the deployment to complete successfully, let's look at our OpenCard application, infrastructure as code template, and VMware ARIA automation assembler. In the template designer, we see now cloud consumption interface resources that we can drag and drop from the resources library into the canvas to build our application. There are three CCI resource types we can choose from. On the top of the template, we see the CCI supervisor namespace resource represents the supervisor Kubernetes-based workspace where all the user managed vSphere supervisor IS resources get created for the application. Next, we have the CCI Supervisor Resources type, 
which we can use to pass Kubernetes manifest for services we need to create within a supervisor namespace context. In this template, we see the CCI supervisor resource type for creating a virtual machine service to define the allowed ports and protocols we need, which automatically creates our VM load balancer. A virtual machine to run the application's MySQL database, a cloud init code containing all the content and commands we need to execute in guest to set up our database passed as a Kubernetes secret object. And finally, a TKG cluster is configured based on user input like we saw, which determines the number and the size of the control plane and worker nodes. The last CCI resource type is the CCI TKG resource, which allows us to execute the Kubernetes manifest we need within a TKG cluster this time. Starting with creating a cluster role binding that grants access to authenticated users to run a privileged set of workloads using a default pod security policy. Then we create a namespace called OpenCart for our application to contain all the resources needed by the front end deployment, such as persistent volume claims, secrets for our application and database connection, the front end web load balancer service, which allows consumer to access the application using a browser. And finally, the front end deployment, which depends on all the components we just outlined, including the IP address of the database service. Once the template is tested and finalized, we can assign it a unique version number and have it released to the service broker catalog where we can initially request the application. Now let's go ahead and check our deployment back in service broker where we can see that our application is complete. On the deployment level, we can take actions. We can execute day two actions such as changing the lease or ownership of the deployment. Where if we click on the name of our deployment, we can see information about the application we just provisioned, the URL to access the open card, and the instructions on how to access the TKG cluster via the kubectl CCI plugin command line, all within the deployment overview tab. Let's go ahead and click on the application URL to test our application. We see that our modern online store application is loading successfully. Additionally, project users can manage the created supervisor namespace and its resources directly in service broker or by clicking on the backend link for easy access within the deployment overview tab. The link takes us to the provisioned supervisor namespace we named CCI open card within the request form where we can explore and manage all the supervisor resources. Clicking the virtual machine tile shows us the TKG provisioned nodes, VMs, and the MySQL VM along with their status, power state, IP address, the VM image, and the class, and its uptime, in addition to the ability to provision additional VMs if needed via the UI within the CCI open card supervisor namespace. Clicking the double arrows on the VM MySQL gives us access to more information about the VM and access also to the active YAML or the VM console if needed. Clicking the VM name takes us to the VM details page. It provides access to day two actions such as changing the power state of the VM, specifying additional disk volumes, increasing capacity on existing volumes or detaching volumes from the VM. Returning to the supervisor namespace to explore the TKG service style, we see the provision TKG cluster name, the cluster's current state, the Kubernetes release version it's using, and the cluster uptime, in addition to the ability to provision as well additional TKG clusters if needed. Clicking the TKG cluster takes us to the cluster detail page. This gives us access to more information about the cluster, access to the active YAML, and an option to download the kubeconfig file that allows us to access the cluster quickly from the kubectl command line without having to do a TKG cluster CCI login. 
and the ability to perform scaling operations by increasing the replica account to scale the cluster in and out or change the VM class to scale the control plane and worker nodes up or down. This is in addition to the ability to attach or deattach storage volumes to the worker nodes if needed. Now clicking the volume service dial shows us the persistent volume claim created with its status, capacity, health, the storage class it's using, configured access mode, and uptime, and the ability to provision, of course, additional volumes if needed. Clicking the network service will show us all these services that got created on the supervisor namespace and the TKG cluster level as a result of our application deployment, such as the front-end service, MySQL service, and the TKG control plane server API service, their load balancer external IP addresses, the protocols and ports it allows, and the uptime of the services. We can click on the service name or the double arrows to get more details like the assigned labels or view the active YAML for the service. In addition, if needed, there is the ability, of course, to provision additional VM load balancers by clicking Create within the VM load balancer tab. The Cloud Consumption Interface CCI powered by ARIA Automation within the VCF stack provides a simple and secure self-service consumption of all the Kubernetes-based desired state IS APIs available in vSphere, enabling enterprises to implement a VMware Cloud DevOps experience with ease and develop applications with increased agility, flexibility, and modern techniques on vSphere while maintaining control of their vSphere infrastructure. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.